All right, everybody, welcome back. We're doing rotational motion, kinematics, and this is going to be part two. Slightly more difficult, but hopefully you guys are ready for it. All right, so we have a grinding wheel, starts at rest, and accelerates uniformly for 10 seconds. Reaches maximum speed of 25 radians per second. The wheel runs for another 37 seconds and then shuts off. The wheel decelerates uniformly at 1.5 uh, radians per second squared until the wheel stops. What is the time interval it takes the wheel to slow down to a stop? So there's a lot of information in this question, but a lot of it isn't really necessary. We have all this thing of it accelerating uniformly, it's running for a certain amount of time, but all we care about is how long did it take to stop once it was shut off? Okay, so let's write up the revel relevant information for that. So when it shuts off, it's going at a speed of 25 radians per second. So omega initial is 25 radians per second. As always, please pause the video to try to do it on your own. Okay, uh, it shuts off and comes to a stop. So that means the omega final is equal to zero. And we know it decelerates at 1.5 radians per second squared. I'm going to say that's going to be negative because it's going in the opposite direction uh, as the uh, omega. So how long does it take? What we're looking for is the time. Okay. Great. Now we have four variables. And we need to look at what equation has all four of these variables. So we have omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. So let's do this. 0 is equal to 25 plus negative 1.5 times t. So put this over to the other side. Negative 25 divided by negative 1.5 equals t. t is equal to 25 divided by 1.5, 16.67 seconds. Okay. All right, uh, moving on. A rigid body, first conceptual question here. A rigid body rotates about a fixed axis. All the points in the body have the same a tangential speed. That's not true. The inside of the body will have less tangential speed. B, angular acceleration. C, angular uh, tangential acceleration. Again, not true. The inside will have less tangential acceleration than the top. Linear displacement um linear no because again the inside and the outside will be different central acceleration no the tangential velocity is different so uh, that means the central acceleration will also be different so that leaves us with angular acceleration so we should know that angular acceleration the angle how much is changing rotationally is the same throughout the whole body, whether you're on the outside of the dice or the inside of the dice or in the middle of the dice, the angular, what's happening angularly, the theta, the displacement, the velocity angularly or acceleration, they're all going to be the same. Okay, moving on. A horizontal disc rotates about a vertical axis to its center. Point, uh, point P is midway between the center and the rim of the disc and point Q is on the rim. If the disc turns with constant angular velocity, which of the following statements of, uh, are true? So we have P and Q have the same linear acceleration. We just talked about that. That's not going to be the case because um, P is closer to the inside, so it's smaller linear acceleration than Q. Uh, part B, Q is moving twice as fast as P. Okay. It is on the outer rim, so it's going to be going faster than this one here. And I think it's midway, so that means it should be going twice as fast. We know that omega is equal to vt times r. And if this r is two times as much, um, what we should know is that... Oh, sorry. I need to change this. <laughs> okay. So we know that vt is equal to omega times r. So if this is twice as much, that means this is going to be twice as much. Okay, so this looks good. The linear acceleration of q is twice as great as the linear acceleration of p. Uh, q 
the linear acceleration of Q is twice as great as the linear acceleration of P. Okay, looking pretty good. It's, tw it's twice as far. The radius is twice as much. The linear acce acceleration of P is twice as great as linear. No, this one would be smaller, so not that. The angular velocity of Q is twice as great as the angular velocity. No, because that they should be the same. Okay, so we have Q is moving twice as fast as P. So you might be thinking like, oops, you might be thinking, well, why is it not C? Well, the thing here is, it says if the disk turns with a constant angular velocity, meaning in this case, alpha is equal to zero for both cases. So that means it won't be twice as much, it'll be zero for both. Okay, moving on. Uh, example number seven. A 1.15 kilogram uh, grinding wheel, 22 centimeters in diameter, is spinning clockwise, counterclockwise at a rate of 20 revolutions per second. When the power to the grinder is turned off, the grinding wheel slows with a constant angle acceleration and takes 80 seconds to come to a rest. What was the angular acceleration in radians per second squared of the grinding wheel as it came to rest if we take a counterclockwise rotation as positive? B, how many revolutions did the wheel make during this time it was coming to rest? All right, so let's see what's going on here. So what we have is, let's write down what we know. We know that the omega initial, at the beginning, it's going 20 revolutions per second. So it's spinning 20 times in one second. So what does that mean? That's going to be equal to 40 pi uh, radians per second. Okay, that's how fast it's going. Uh, I could simplify that more, but anyway, I'll leave it like that. Um, mm -mm -mm, it comes to rest. So it comes to rest, omega final is zero, and we know it takes 80 seconds to come to rest. So 80 seconds. And we want to know what the angular acceleration is, so alpha. Okay, so let's figure this out. We have, um, let's do alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial divided by time. So this will be 40 pi minus zero divided by 80. And let's figure that out. 40 pi divided by 80. 1.57 radians per second squared. Okay. And you could, yeah, I guess you could call it negative. It should be negative because, oh, yeah, I, I flipped this wrong. The omega initial should be 40 pi. So this is 40 pi. And then this omega final should be zero. So it should be negative 1.57. Great. All right, part B, how many revolutions did the wheel make during this time it was coming to rest? Okay, so now we're looking for a change in theta. So we have change in theta is equal to omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. So let's figure this out. Omega initial is 40 pi, t is 80 seconds plus one half alpha is negative 1.57 t is 80 squared all right let's figure this out 80 squared times negative 1.57 times 0.5 plus 40 pi times 80 and well that's a lot we get a number of 5,000 29.1 radians but that is not the amount of revolutions that's how many radians so to figure out how many times we're just going to divide this by 2 pi radians because 2 pi radians equal to 1 revolution we're going to divide it by parentheses make sure you use parentheses or else the pi will make things weird 800 revolutions okay 800 times it spins during that time of slowing down all right hope that helps moving on a 1.25 kilogram ball rolls from rest with a constant angular acceleration downhill. If it takes 3.6 seconds for it to make the first revolu complete revolution, how long will it take to make the next complete revolution? Okay, so, hmm, how are we doing this? I think there's a few ways we can do this. There's a few ways, um, so you might do it differently than me, which is totally fine. Uh, I'm going to start it like this. So... We start. And we know it starts from rest, so I'm going to say it, at the beginning it's not spinning. Uh, angular velocity initial is zero, and then we know to make the next complete revolution. Mm -hmm. So we know it's going to 
the change in theta in total is going to spin two times. So that's going to be equal to 4 pi, okay, because it spins two times. Great. And then anything else we know here? Uh, 3.6 seconds. Hmm. How long would it take to make the complete revolution? Huh. Maybe we don't have enough information. Okay, I'm going to change this. So let's see what the angular acceleration is. So we know when it, it takes 3.6 seconds to make one revolution. So I'm going to call that 2 pi. And then the time is 3.6 seconds. And then what we're going to find out is we're going to find out what alpha is. So I'm going to do change in theta is equal to omega initial t plus 1 half alpha t squared. So we have 2 pi is equal to 0 plus 1 half alpha, which is what we're looking for, t, which is 3.6 squared. All right, let's figure out what alpha is. All right, so we have 2 pi times 2 divided by 3.6 squared. And we get alpha is 0 0.97 radians per second squared. Whoops. Okay, great. Now that we did that, we can um, we can find out how long it took for the next one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, how long did it take to spin around two times? So I'm just going to say 4 pi. So I'm going to use the same formula. Change in theta is equal to omega initial t plus 1 half alpha t squared. Now we want to know how it spins two times, total of two times. So I'm going to do 4 pi is equal to omega initial, which is still 0, plus 1 half alpha, it says it's the same, 0.97 and the time, and that is what we're looking for. So doing a little bit of math, let's see. We have four pi times two divided by 0.97 square root, and we get 5.09 seconds. And that should make sense because the first, sec uh, the first revolution took 3.6, so the next revolution should be shorter because it's accelerating. So, how long will it take to make the next complete revolution? I'm going to do 5.09 minus 3.6. And we should get around 1.49 seconds. Okay. Hope that makes sense. That one was a bit tricky, and there are other ways to do it. So if you did another way, good job. Moving on. All right. So just, you know, in translational motion, we have these general directions. Left, west, down, south is negative, And then we have right, east, up, north to be positive usually, okay? In angular motion, we technically usually do clockwise as negative and counterclockwise as positive. I don't know, it kind of sounds weird, but in general, that's what we do. All right, I'm going to move on. You finished playing a CD. The disk angular velocity at t equals 0 is 27.5 radians per second. At its angular acceleration is a constant negative 10 radians per second squared. What is this angular velocity at time t equals 0 0.3? Okay, so as always, let's write down what we know. Uh, in initial angular velocity is 27.5 radians per second. And the acceleration or angular acceleration is negative 10 radians per second squared. And we want to know what the angular velocity is after 0 0.3 seconds. So we're looking for omega final. Now that we got four pieces of four variables, let's see what we can find. So I'm going to use the formula omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. And omega initial is going to be 27.5 plus alpha with negative 10 time, which is 0.3. It's going to be equal to 24.5 radians per second. Okay, great. Uh, part B is what angle does the line PQ make with the x-axis axis at this time? Okay, so first we're going to find what the change in theta is. So now we know what omega final is. Now we're going to find change in theta. And we can use a few formulas, but I'm going to do this. Change in theta is equal to omega initial t plus 1 half alpha t squared. So omega initial is 27.5. T is 0.3 plus 1 half uh, negative 10 0.3 squared. All right, so let's see what we can find out. 0.3 squared times negative 10 times 0.5. Okay, 
plus 27.5 times 0.3. Uh, yep, yeah, great. And we get 7.8 radians. Okay, so that's radians, but we want to know what angle it makes. Radians is, oops, sorry. We know the 7.8 radians, and we know that I'm going to put one radian as we do some dimensional analysis. One radian, or I should say, uh, 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. These radians cancel out, and let's see what we get. I do 7.8 times 360 divided by parentheses 2 pi. Remember to put that parentheses there. And then I get this equal to 446.9 degrees. Okay, so it's like, I don't know, somewhere over here. It goes all the way around one time, that's 360, and then it's going to make another thing. So I'm going to do minus 360, and we get 86.9 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is 86.9. That was kind of like difficult, so if you had a hard time, watch that back. All right, moving on. All right, three types of acceleration. So this is kind of important to know. A child pushes with a constant force, a merry-go-round of radius 5 meters. A boy is at the edge of the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round is pushed from rest to an angular velocity of 0 0.5 radians per second uh, in 3.8 seconds. What is the angular acceleration of the boy? Okay, so let's see what we know. Uh, constant force is at the edge. The merry-go-round is pushed from rest. So omega initial is equal to 0. Uh, 2 in angular, so omega final is equal to 0 0.5 and time is equal to 3.8 seconds and then what are we looking for angular acceleration now that we have four piece of information let's look at a formula sheet to see what's next so we have alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial divided by time so we got 0 0.5 minus 0 divided by 3.8 okay. 0.5 divided by 3.8 we get 0. 1, 3 radians per second squared. Great. So that's how much it's rotating slash spinning. That's the acceleration as which it's spinning. Now we want to find out what the centripetal acceleration is of the boy at 3.8 seconds. Okay. So we should know centripetal acceleration, if you remember from uniform circular motion, is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by radius. So the tangential velocity is going to be equal to omega at saying at 3.8 seconds so that's going to be equal to omega which is 0 0.5 uh, times the radius which is 5 and both of this is going to be squared because that's the tangential velocity divided by the radius which is 5. okay so let's figure out what that is uh, 0 0.5 times 5 squared divided by 5 and we get 1.25 meters per second squared okay so that's the centripetal acceleration Whoops. can I do something wrong? 5 times 0.5 squared divided by 5 okay great 1.25 meters per second squared all right, see, what is the tangential acceleration of the boy at 3.8 seconds? Okay, tangential acceleration. So remember, acceleration tangent is just equal to alpha times r. So alpha we found was 0.13. r is 5. So let's find out what that is. 0.13 times 5. 0 0.65 meters per second squared. So yeah, lots of acceleration, which can definitely make this topic kind of confusing. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, next time we're gonna stop talking about kinematics and we're gonna talk a little bit more, something more related with force, which we call torque. Thanks for watching everyone, bye.